This next segment is entitled Dissecting Organic Physical Actions. We saw in the last segment how when an action is in consecutive, it's very hard to justify, didn't we? But now I'm going to ask you to do something very, very typical. But before I do, I want to ask you a question. What is an organic physical action? Spontaneous. Just real. Truthful. Truthful. Well, Stanislavski called an action organic, meaning an organic physical action meant something we do by habit without even having to think about it, such as driving. Now, in the beginning, it's not organic, is it? But then once we learn how to drive, we apply it to second nature. The same thing has to occur with your acting. To really build a character means to select an entire chain of actions which are different from your own patterns. It's so difficult for many actors to do, that's why they just play themselves. There's two schools of thought around action. One is playing the action and representing the behavior of the character. And the other is fulfilling an action and living the life of the character. So an organic action in our school of acting, which is to live the life of the character called the life of the human spirit or the theater of living experience, that's why I call the textbook The Living Actor, is the only way we can achieve transformation is like building blocks or sculpture to sculpt each movement on stage logically until the combination of all the movements give the impression of another human being. It's the impression because you're still coming from yourself, only your physical behavior has transformed. And that can only be done moment by moment. You can't just put on a character and then walk around like that because it'll be too much in general. Human beings are specific in the moment, see? So the method of physical actions gives us the ability to do that. There's also another very important part to remember, and that is conditioned reflex. The only way we can remember all these minute little physical actions is to repeat them enough with enough control that they become second nature. So when we work on a role, we work on it psychophysically, putting the emphasis on the physical side, and eventually that becomes second nature, and then it becomes an organic physical action. But in the beginning, you don't feel comfortable in the character. You don't know how to move your hands. You don't know how to move your feet. You don't know where he or she is going on stage. So they're not organic. Do you understand? And they're not logical. Your job is to find that connection. When you find the sequence of logical, physical behavior and you justify it moment by moment, you will simultaneously find the score of emotions in the play and live them as the character through physical actions. That's the goal of the training in this, in this school of acting. Do you understand? Does everybody follow? Now I'm going to ask you to take off your sweater or your shoes, whatever you've chosen, and to do so moment by moment, only engaging the muscles that are necessary to accomplish the task. So you're going to be using your internal controller and your external controller. You're, so you're going to observe how muscle by muscle, in sequence, logically, how do you do that? Only engage the muscles that are necessary to accomplish the task. And consequently, there'll be the flow of energy there behind it. You may begin at any time you want. You can use the space any way you want. When you've completed that, reverse the actions in the exact reverse order as if you were running a film backwards. 
as best as you can remember and only engage the necessary muscles. If you really saw me, think about it. If you unzip something from here, how do, you do how do you do it backwards? How do you do it backwards? How did you solve it? You just put it together, huh? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Now, in this next exercise, you're going to walk, pick up a book, and then take it back to where you are now, read it, okay? And then bring it back here. And then you're going to repeat the whole thing backwards. Does everybody understand? As if you're running a tape backwards. So you really need to watch yourself the first time through. Whenever you like. You just do it naturally at first. Only just engage the muscles that are necessary. It's really simple. Just engage the muscles that are necessary. But observe how you do it. Just read it a couple lines, doesn't have to be any more. And then you're going to put it back, just as you would in life, just normally. And now you're going to do the whole thing again in back sequence. So how do you do that? They get more complicated. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be perfect, it's the process of figuring it out. That is, imp that is perfect. And trust your muscle memory, your kinetic memory. Good. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for your ability to control your movements. When I worked on um, des Desire Under the Elms and I had to play a 76-year-old man, I was only 27 years old, 26 when we started rehearsals, very difficult. It meant really finding every possible physical movement and being able to repeat it with ultimate control because I couldn't just behave as an old man. That would have been pretending. I had to find that age in my muscles, in my movement, and I had to slow everything down and find it and then gradually bring it up to speed. Does that make sense? And, and, and all the time I had to add and sew the psychology of the character into each of those movements. So it's a process, but it can be done. It's physical actions. Now I want you to remove your coat and jacket. Just take it off, whatever, or your shoes, just the way you would. and just drop it on the floor. Now I want you to remove it again without the object. And recall the sensations. Beginning of the use of sense memory, we put all of our attention when we do sense memory on the physical side of the action. If you put it on the physical side of the action, you will automatically recall the sensation. Does that make sense? Did you all? Did you recall the sensation? Good. Now put it on without the actual object. Just no. without the object. No. But recalling all the details of physical movement. Every detail of physical movement. Keep your focus on yourself, not on me. Do the sensations come back? If you can feel it when you put your... I could tell by the way you made that little adjustment. And I saw it out of the corner of my eye that you actually felt like you put your shoes on. Sense memory recall is what we're looking at okay. through physical action. It's One piece of paper is a note and you've just finished writing this note and you're reading it before you sign it. Before you, you're going to fold it into quarters. You're going to put it in an envelope and the other piece of paper is your envelope. So if you just want to pre-fold that once, that's fine. Then you're going to seal it. Now, 
I want you to do this as an improvisation. So within the space, you don't have to be standing. If you want to sit on the floor, if you want to take a chair and use that, build a situation, name the event. Build the circumstances. Know specifically who you're sending the note to, what the purpose of the note is, when it is, where it is, what time of day. Are you writing at 3 o'clock in the morning and breaking up with a lover? Or are you in the military and there's bombs blasting all around you and you're writing a letter to your girlfriend? You decide. Do you understand? Or your boyfriend, whoever you happen to be writing to. So it, 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 and it's, you're going to do it first with the paper and the envelope. Then, you're, remember you have to take an imaginary pen and then you're going to repeat the action without any props. Okay? So would you please build your circumstances and adjust your body psychophysically to your circumstances. And find typical behavior for your situation. You're finished, you're reading the note, you're going to fold it and seal it is the action. The task, fold, seal, a letter. Only engage the necessary muscles. I want to be able to look at you and guess the content of the note. Final gesture will reveal your emotion. Okay, now do the same thing again. You can, of course, adapt it because you're not going to go backwards. Now you're all aware. Something's opened up inside. I can see it in your eyes and in your bodies. Now I want you to do it without the paper, but recalling the sensations through physical details. And really find interesting and logical and clear evaluations and gestures. It's fine to borrow from your own experiences because you need to find analogous emotions that later you can draw upon those images for the creation of your characters. Yours also was very dramatic, a little upsetting, um, a painful and difficult decision. Do yeah. you want to tell us about it? It was uh, saying goodbye to someone, actually giving them an ultimatum. So I thought it was goodbye, but I didn't know for sure. Okay. Oh, okay, ending of a relationship. And Mindy, I had, I, you know, I didn't get to watch you entirely, but the, your final gesture with the note was very good. It also seemed like it was cleaning up something of the past. Yeah. yeah. A husband died in the war, so it was uh, writing a letter to the president. Oh, <laughs> telling him what you really yeah. thought. Yeah, so it was sadness, but at the same time, it was just like, what was the theme of that improvisation? The theme was... Um, you wanted... I wanted to get my... I wanted to express the... the anger, whatever, the... 
We, well, remember thematic scores are things like peace, justice, I guess uh, revenge. Expressing, you know, that, that was my way of, of justice. Okay, justice would be the theme. Yeah. It's not an action, but it's the yeah. overriding tone and idea of the piece. It's the light motif, the recurrent theme, right? Now, if you were to do this as a play, or as an improvisation with others, we have a word for this type of improvisation when you're making a social statement. What is it called, do you remember? Civil duty. Civic, yes, right, civic, civil duty, civic duty improvisation. We want to do that because plays, even plays that are not political in theme, there's always politics when you're talking about status between people and relationships and injustices and the things that we suffer through, there's always some kind of a political thread through things. And I'm not talking here propaganda politics. I'm talking just about the politics of human behavior. And also when you choose a social theme, let's say you were doing this and it was a theme in a play or movie about the current war, you, then it would be definitely a civic duty. You f would be telling something that you feel strongly about through your art. And that's very, very important. That's artists do. We are the mirrors of our culture and our society and we need to be clear mirrors for them. Why do we name events? When you name an event of an action, what happens is you automatically know how to behave. It tells you how to behave. The breakup, you're not going to call it, you know, um, celebration. celebration because it's, you're going to behave differently. So in naming a scene, naming an episode, giving it a metaphor or a noun name is going to tell you exactly how to behave in it.